Duly noted, 11-4-2015. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here at the amazing Cattle Sport. Yes, it's amazing. Uh, I'm a little biased, but it is. I want to show you a multifidus activation drill that mimics some of the baby's pearl cropping that you can do called a modified Superman. Uh, the multifidus lumborum are a set of muscles that are in the intrinsic back system, and these muscles are often atrophied during disc herniation because people tend to trade off intersegmental stabilization for bigger global movement. I'll give you an example. Uh, people tend to do an exercise to strengthen the erector spinae called the Superman, and they will do this big motion like this, and they're not really using their multifida, their neck. They're using erector spinae. Erector spinae run all the way from your cranium down to your sacrum. And these are largely extrinsic stabilization muscles of the spine. They are called the intermediate intrinsics, which is a fancy way to say they're a little more outside of where the multifidi are. Multifidi are a little bit better and more robust at being able to strengthen and stabilize the lumbar spine. So the way that you can do this is a little bit more like the baby does a superman. We'll call it the modified superman for the multifidi. So you use your elbow as stability points and you use your thanar eminence, the palm right here. These two are going to be your stability points. So you're going to use those on the ground and you're going to actively pull yourself downwards. What that does is a couple of things. It's going to help you to get into a more of a spinal neutral position. So you're not yanking the head up into extension. You're not pulling into flexion. And you're also helping the lat and glute connect to turn on muscles that are attached to the thoracolumbar aponeurosis. One of these muscles is multifidus. So if you're trying to activate things that attach to the thoracolumbar aponeurosis, the big diamond in your back, you want to bring the elbows in and you want to push through those stability points. As you do that, you're gently pulling the ribs, the front of the ribs, down towards the hips like this. So it's a very gentle motion. And then after you do that, then you lift your arms and feet up. And you'll see that's very, very different in your sensory awareness than this or this. It feels much, much different. Let me tell you, a lot for a lot of people, it's way harder. Let's do that one more time just so you see it. So the spine is relatively neutral, neck long, chin tucked. You're pulling the elbows towards your feet and your body naturally should go into a ribs down position. After you're there, then you lift up. Much, much harder. I prefer more of a plantar flex foot, but if you want to aim it a little bit more towards dorsiflexion, you can. Uh, especially if you have uh, calves that are a little bit tight during this, you can definitely dorsiflex a little bit to get a little bit of a stretch out of them, a little bit more glute activation. The glutes will activate a little bit more probably if you pull the foot into dorsiflexion or toes to the shin. Uh, give this a shot if you're trying to rehabilitate from uh, some of your disc herniations or facet syndromes. Uh, we call it flexion intolerance or extension intolerance low backs. Uh, backs that don't want to go to these huge ranges. Probably you were doing that for too long and now your body's intolerant to it. So developing some intrinsic stability for the spine is always well. Mimic that baby, try this out, and you can come back at drkathydooley at gmail.com. Thanks.